tried school today and we were not able to upload the video. Um, so I'm doing this from home. My writing might be a little bit messy because I'm having to use the screen to write on. Um, we're going to do 3.3 part 2 today, subtracting rational numbers. Your I can statement is I can subtract fractions and decimals. In the area that says key, key uh, terms, we'd like you guys today to write things to remember. Um, make sure you have these written down as reminders for you. So subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. You also need to remember that when subtracting fractions, you need a common denominator. So let's go back. Let me write, uh, let me write a few examples for you. So it's going to be messy because I'm writing with my finger. Um, okay, so subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So just know, remember, 2 minus 3 is the same thing as 2 plus a negative 3. And then when you're looking at when subtracting fractions, you need a common denominator. If I'm looking at 1 third plus 2 fifths, I need a common denominator. So I would need to make it... What's my common denominator for 3 and 5? 15. This is all review for you guys. Okay, 3 times 5 gives me 15. So 1 times 5 gives me 5. And then 5 times 3 gives me 15, and 2 times 3 would give me 6. Now I can add those together, and I'm off the page. I'm going to come over here. I could call it 5 plus 6 is 11 fifteenths, and then you're done, okay? So common denominators. And then remember, when you're subtracting decimals, to line up your decimals with the bigger group on top. So this is where we're seeing a lot of mistakes being made. If I have 2.3 minus 5.7... 2.3 minus 5.7, first thing I need to do is add the opposite, and then I know that it's different signs, so I need to subtract. A lot of you are writing 2.3 on the top and, and taking away 5.7. You need to put your bigger group on the top, so 5.7 minus 2.3, and set up your problem that way, okay? Do not put your 2.3 on top. Your bigger group goes on top. All right, let's look at the first example. So finding the distance between two numbers, a cave explorer climbed from an elevation of negative 11 meters to an elevation of negative five meters. What vertical distance did the explorer climb? So there's two ways listed here showing you how to do this. There's, there's A and B, but I'm gonna make this three different ways to do this. So we're gonna have a way C to do this as well, okay? So the first way to do it is to use the number line here, and they're using a vertical number line. You guys can use a horizontal if you want, whatever you're more comfortable with. So I'm going to start at negative 11 meters. So I'm going to start down here at negative 11, see how messy and how off it is. Okay. It says count the number of units on the vertical line up to negative 5. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I moved 6 places, so the explorer climbed 6 meters. This means that the vertical distance between negative 11 and negative 5 meters is 6 meters. And that's a positive 6, okay? You can see that right here on the number line, so it all matches up. Now, the second way, so this way is using the number line. I'm going to put line because it's hard to write right now. We're going to do option B, which is finding the difference between two elevations using absolute value. So if I take negative 11 and I subtract negative 5, that's finding the difference between negative 11 and negative 5. If you come over here, let's do it down here, negative 11 minus negative 5. Don't forget that you have to add the opposite. So when I add the opposite, I get negative 11 plus 5. I subtract and keep the sign of the greater number. That's negative 6. Now, if you look at what we did before, we went up 6 units. So how could we possibly get a negative 6 here? Well, that's why we, it says here that we need to take the absolute value of the difference because distance traveled is always a non-negative number because you can't travel a negative distance. So what you do is you take the absolute value of negative 6, which is 6. So again, you're saying the vertical distance is 6 meters. Okay. What Ms. Talati and I would rather have you do, because a lot of you forget to use the absolute value, is, and we talked about this in another video, you could set it up as your end minus your start, okay? So where did I end up? I ended up at negative five, 
And if I find the difference between the end and the start, and my start was negative 11, now look at the computation problem you have there. You know your rules. You need to add the opposite. So you've now got negative 5 plus 11, which means subtract and keep the sign of the greater group. So 6 meters. And that way you don't really have to use the absolute value. Okay? So this method right here is the method we would rather have you use when you're trying to find the distance between two points. All right, let's look at the, the next example. All right, during the hottest week of the summer, the water level of the Muskrat River was five, six feet below normal, below. The following week, the level was one third foot below normal. What is the overall change in the water level? So think about what I was just saying. If you're doing end minus start to find the difference, so if you're doing end minus start, what was your end level? It was one third foot below. So negative one third minus, and then where did you start? Five six of a foot below. So negative five six because you're below. Now, if you do these and add the opposite, we'll be able to find the difference without using absolute values. So add the opposite. And then take into consideration, you're now looking at fractions. You need a common denominator. The first value that three and six both fit into is six. So I'm gonna make new fractions. And three times two gets me six. So I multiply by two on top as well. So I get negative two, six. My denominator is gonna be six there as well. Oh, it's already six. So I really ultimately would just multiply by one. So that's five, six. Now I'm talking in, in six, and so remember, don't add those together and call it 12. You stay in six, and then you can just look at your numerators. Negative two plus five is three, six. Do not forget to put your answer in lowest terms. Three and six have a common factor of three, so you can divide both of these by three, and that becomes one half. So then if we answer the question, what is the overall change? Write it out. The overall change, sorry about my writing, is one half foot. Okay? All right, so there's a lot to remember in that problem. Setting up the difference to find the difference between two points and minus start, making sure you use common denominators, and then following your rules for adding integers. Okay. Oops, let's go back. All right, here's your additional practice. Make sure you're doing this. Reminder, some of you are still not doing your additional practice, and Ms. Tawadi mentioned the same thing. You guys won't get credit if you're not doing your additional practice. If you don't understand one, you're still to attempt it, and then circle it, and we'll go over it in class. And then don't forget you have computation here. The other thing Ms. Tawadi wanted to point out is that if you're just showing, showing answers and no work, you won't be getting credit either, okay? All right, you guys have a great night. I will go ahead and post this now so you guys can all see it.